Welcome to the John DeVito Show, and I'm going to be continuing on with my shows on the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati. I've got a few of these left. I started these a while back. And if you don't know much about these 13 families, these 13 families are the ultra-rich. Ultra they are the overlords that we talk so much about. They are the wealthy. They are the ones that control government. They control finances. They replace world governments when they feel the need to. They control literally, literally every aspect of your life, even if you don't know it. Now, these essays I am getting are from a book named uh, by the author Fritz Springmeier. And I've, read through, I've run through several of these families. I'm continuing on. I have four left. I think four left. So I'm going to try to get those done in, in the next week or two. This family here that I'm going to talk about today is one of the most very powerful uh, families in all of the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati. This is the Reynolds family. Now, Reynolds, does that, does that sound familiar? You probably think of cigarettes, tobacco, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. And if you really think about a family that has profited off of the killing of millions of people worldwide, with their nicotine and tobacco, it doesn't really surprise you to find out that they are one of the 13 families of the Illuminati, and they have a lot of ties to evil, to black magic, and a variety of other things throughout the years. So without further ado, I'm going to try to keep this to as close as 20 minutes as I can. That's been my new time on my podcast. This might be a little tight, but I'll try my best, okay? So the Reynolds family is not one of the 13 primary bloodlines, but they are such a prominent Illuminati family within the 13 bloodlines that Fritz decided to single them out for another article on Illuminati bloodlines. Although the Reynolds are allied with some of the major satanic bloodlines, including the Rothschilds, we've talked about them and we've done a show on them, the DuPonts, the Rockefellers, the Graces, and the Grays, they are especially close and intertwined to the Duke and Cullman families. And that's one example of a duke Reynolds joint project is the Research Triangular Foundation. It should be remembered that the Temporary National Economic Committee of Congress in 1937, which studied the super rich, found that the Dukes and the Reynolds were among the 13 wealthiest families in America. Further, the research, research at one place or another has shown that the Reynolds of the Illuminati variety have interacted with all of the other major satanic bloodlines. Now, when you think of this family that's responsible for producing cigarettes and tobaccos and vapes, you wonder what type of people would knowingly create these products, knowing that they cause cancer and death. Well, when you look into the history of the family and see they have ties with satanic bloodlines, it really isn't a surprise. These families that are controlling us are really mired in evil. So this these elite birds of feather all flock together, it seems. So I'm going to uh, go forward a little bit. Now, I wish I could show you this. This is one of the negatives about having a podcast without video. But they show in this article a local newspaper advertisement from many years ago. And it says right in here about mind control and the Reynolds family. The Illuminati Reynolds bloodline participates fully with the Monarch Mind Control Program. David V. Reynolds did electroshock research that pertains to mind control. I don't know if he is part of the satanic cult of the Illuminati, but his research on electroshock is helpful for them to use in mind control. C.C. Thomas published David Reynolds' book entitled Neuroelectric Research, Electrophoresis, and I can't even read the rest of it, but it's just all about mind control and electric shock treatment that the Reynolds family was involved with. So some of the Reynolds family have also written books on the occult. Uh, I don't know how all of the people mentioned in the section are related, but some or all of these people may relate to the satanic Reynolds bloodline. One of the important economical Christian leaders is Frank E. Reynolds, who is, the, who is an American Baptist minister 
ordained in 1955 and also the program director of the Student Christian Center in Bangkok, Thailand, uh, the minister for Chicago Economical Ministries, Frank E. Reynolds has been trying to introduce Buddhism to America. He and his wife, Manny, have written a number of books to introduce and teach Buddhism to Americans. Many of the Reynolds have been Episcopalians. Remember, the Episcopalian Church is run by Freemasons and is thoroughly sold out to the occult. One of the monarch, monarch survivors vividly recalls a human sacrifice done at the altar of an Episcopalian church. Anyway, getting back to some of the names of Reynolds who have written occult books, here is a list of some of them. Now, take in this list. Barry L. Gordon Reynolds, who is the author of Magic uh, Witchcraft along with uh, Baratosk in northern R Rhodesia. Charles R. Reynolds with Regina Reynolds, authors of 100 Years of Magic Posters, and that was published in 1977. David K. R. Reynolds, author of Nikon Psychotherapy, Medication for Self-Development by the Chicago Press. Denise A. R. Reynolds, Sensitive Thought for the New Wave Soul. Manny R. Reynolds, with her husband, Three Worlds According to King Ruana, the Buddhist Cosmology, Frankie Reynolds' Guide to the Buddhist Religion, Jane Reynolds again, Cosmobiology, and Lloyd J. Reynolds, My Dear Runmeister, A Voyage Through the Alphabet. So these are all well-known books that were written about the occult by the Reynolds family. Now, let's take a look into their finances. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, let's take a quick overview of the Reynolds' financial interests. Much of the family's money has been well hidden behind fronts, holding companies, etc. The Satanists of the Reynolds family have been involved in high-level drug dealing during this century. They've also had some important and major interests in, bank in banking, tobacco, and aluminum. It seems like a fair number have gotten into the mortuary cremation business, which is great assistance for cremation after rituals involving human sacrifice. The financial interests of the Reynolds seem to be strongest in the Middle South and strong in both Virginia and North Carolina. The Reynolds' financial interests are so tightly woven in and with the Cullmans and Dukes that I will have to deal with all three families altogether. A few years ago, the financial heads of the three families were as follows. Angier Biddle Duke, Richard S. Reynolds, Jr., Joseph F. Cullman, III, were all members of a society called the Pilgrim Society. It is possible that the families all had sonic type of secret spiritual hierarchy as well. If so, it might follow along the lines of the top 13 families, which have kings and princes and princesses of their bloodlines. Richard S. Reynolds Jr. has been a board chairman of Robert Shaw Controls Company, which has a stranglehold monopoly on manufacturing car thermostats and other parts. The big three American manufacturers all buy for Robichaw Control Company, but since then, all three of the American auto manufacturers are Illuminati controlled. They likely don't care that the Reynolds family has such a stranglehold on them, on, stranglehold on them because they're part of it. Cadence, who owns theaters and published occult comic books like the series Journey into Mystery and the, with the Mighty Thor, is also tied to the Reynolds family. Cadence promotes the occult while making money. What America doesn't know what Reynolds rap is. The Reynolds name is a well-known household name, just like the DuPonts with paint, or the Rock or Rockefeller Center, or the Waldorf Astoria, a well-known American items named after Illuminati families. The Reynolds family controls several aluminum companies, which form a large part of the Illuminati-controlled aluminum cartel. The Mellon family works with the Reynolds in this aluminum cartel, and various Illuminati families also have their hands in the management of the aluminum industry. Now let's go into the tobacco and drug connection. The Reynolds family is behind R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. Bowden Gray of the Satanic Gray Gray family is heir to the R.J. Tobacco Company. But don't let that sidetrack you. The Reynolds family still has financial interest and power in the company. 
If readers remember previous articles on the ter- top 13 Illuminati families, the Asher family article, the Onassis family article, and the Lee family article, you will remember some de- details that will help you understand the secret illegal drug trade that the Reynolds got involved in. The British elite got involved in shipping opium. The elite families got monopol- monopolies on the opium trade. The British Empire's military might have political clout was used to force China to allow the opium trade. Before the communists took over China, the British Illuminati families hid their opium trade behind the cover of the British American Tobacco Company. Later, the Red Chinese would hide their opium trading behind the same front tobacco with the state-run People's Republic of China Tobacco Bureau. In fact, the Red Chinese opium trade was controlled by another Illuminati, the PR president, Li Zhenyan. Li Zhenyan is the occult Yu family who are proud that they are leading the Oriental Satanic family. President Li, a drug lord, was fiancé minister to Red China, China from 1957 to 1975. He, was so, he sold so much opium to the West that he was able to, open, able to help Red China pay off all of their debts and was nicknamed the Money God. R.J. Reynolds was a partner with the British American Tobacco Company and was also ne- involved in trading opium for many years. R.J. Reynolds was also involved with the rigidly controlled tobacco industry. So if you really look at the R.J. Reynolds company, they've been tied to satanic practices. They are in the drug and tobacco trade. They have their hands in pushing propaganda in comic books to children to push the occult and have written many books on the same subjects. So it's just crazy to think about, you know, that uh, this family is so powerful and so rich and they just kind of float by in front of all of us without any real investigation into what this family is about. So there are a lot of connections of the R.J. Reynolds family to Illuminati organizations. Many of the Illuminati organizations, which the newsletter has exposed here, have members from Reynolds, the Reynolds family. Some examples of this follow the Cosmos Club with Joseph Melvin Reynolds and Lloyd George Reynolds. The Council of Foreign Relations, Foreign Relations with A. William Reynolds, the Pilgrim Society, which we talked about earlier, with Richard S. Reynolds Jr., 33 Degree Masons, Harmon Gansfold Reynolds and Marshall S. Reynolds, 32 Degree Masons, Arthur Ro- Rowley Reynolds, Ben Phillips Reynolds, Charles Philip Reynolds, and Charles Shaw Reynolds, Erwin er- James Reynolds, Isaac Reynolds, Harry Edwards Reynolds. Henry James Reynolds, John C. Reynolds, who was also the Deputy Grand Secretary of the Grand Lodge in Illinois. Knights Templar Masons. These three KT names all come from one lodge in New York in Jerusalem Center, or Jerusalem Chapter. Number eight would be Alex Reynolds, J. Hyatt Reynolds, and T. Spaulding Reynolds. The Knights of Malta, John Charles Reynolds, who worked for the Graces as a communications executive and trustee of the Presbyterian Hospital in San Juan. So looking through this article, there are a couple of things I want to read. Now, for those of you that don't know how powerful R.J. Reynolds Industries is, R.J. Reynolds Industries of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, had an annual sales of over $6 billion dollars and 37,000 employees. Think about the size of that company. Uh, I have a 1976 profit figure for the company was 353 million in 1976. That is a crazy profit number going back that far. And that would even be a crazy profit number today in 2023. So that gives you an idea how rich this family is. The public thinks that the shares are widely held by the public which in reality, the control is very narrow. The Reynolds were very careful when their stocks went on the market to retain secret control. R.J. Reynolds Industries chairman was Colin Stokes. Colin Stokes is a very interesting person who works for the Reynolds. He was a member of the Kiwanis International and director of several key things, director of the Winston-Salem Savings Alone, 
director of Integron, Integron Corporation, and also NCNB Corporation, which is the bank holding company of North Carolina Bank. The NCNB, which at one time had assets of $4.647 billion, has been the largest of Middle South banks and a key component of the reynolds duke Cullman click from 1958 to 1964. Stokes was the director of the William and Kate B. Reynolds Memorial Park and further serves as the Reynolds trustee of the Wake Forest University um, group as well. Another interesting liaison person for the Reynolds has been J.P. Stite, a director of R.J. Reynolds, who has acted as liaison, liaison between the Reynolds, Duke, and the Rockefeller dynasties. Stite is a member of Rockefeller University Council and a member of the Board of Visitors to Duke University. Leyland Hammond Coleman, who is in the Illuminati from the Satanic Coleman family, also sits as a director of R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. So if you think about it, now we're at 16 minutes right now. I can't read everything about these companies to you. But what I can do is open your mind a little bit and allow you to start thinking about these 13 families of the Illuminati. You can check out my podcast. I believe this is the ninth or 10th podcast I've done talking about each of the members of the Illuminati. This particular podcast was about the Reynolds bloodline. And I mean, there are many, many, many fa famous names that you know. The Kennedy bloodline, the Onassis bloodline, the Rothschild bloodline, uh, the Rockefeller bloodline, the Lee bloodline, the Bundy bloodline. The names are out there. You can listen to my podcast, and I hope that you do, or you can get on the internet and research these 13 families of the bloodline. These families control everything in this world. They control the banks. They control the money. They control governments in each country. They control, they control world governments. They control every aspect of your life. They control what you watch, what you do, what you consume. And these are the people that are using television stations, media outlets, social media, and all these different companies to brainwash you into falling in line and doing what these bloodlines want you to do. They only care about control. And the scary thing about the majority of these families is when you look into their backgrounds and you search back in history, almost every one of these families has an original origin of evil, occult, um, Satanism, belonging to Satanist groups. And when you really break that down and think about how all of these powerful families who run the world all have origins in evil and Satanism, it really gives you an idea why some days you wake up and wonder, what's wrong with this world? Why are there so many bad people in this world? Why are there so many negative things that happen? Because when you look at the people that control all of this, they are the original bloodlines. They are the people that have used Satanism to control all of us. So I'm at 1825 right now. I'm going to wrap this one up. I've got a few more to do, and I hope to complete those in the next week. So I hope you go back and listen to all my podcasts on the bloodlines of the Illuminati, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and thank you for tuning in to The John DeVito Show.